Welcome to Let's Draw That. I'm Jill. Today I received the package, uh, which is a new tool to cut spur gears. Uh, here I have a uh, an arbor, and as you can see, there's an envelope cutter attached to it currently. That's the one that I'm going to use. Uh, the box actually contains more of them. Um, and uh, so let's um, take this apart, have a closer look, and let's talk about um, uh, spur gears and envelope cutters. Okay, so let's have a quick look at uh, what comes in this kit. Uh, there are a total of eight envelope cutters. Uh, we'll go into detail as to which one to pick and all this stuff. This is the matching arbor. It comes with a whole lot of different size shims so that you can pick uh, the height at which you're going to work. Uh, this, the shaft is 22 millimeters and it is keyed. Let me show you, here's the key right there. The finish is very good. I haven't detected any burring or, you know, uh, deformities in the process of machining this tool. This is an R8 with a 7 16 uh, thread pattern. So it's going to fit great in my milling machine. Now in my case, uh, I'm going to be using the number five uh, spur gear. Um, and uh, so let me just put this on just for now and we'll talk about uh, the actual selection process. Okay, what I've got here is uh, the actual stub gear. It's an 18 tooth stub gear from my South Bend 13 and uh, and just to be clear my South Bend 13 has a quick change gear with one lever so that is different than the two levers and um, one of the calculations that's important in trying to figure out diametral pitch of your gear is uh, quite simple you take the measurement of the diameter and the number of teeth. And the formula is as follows. The diametral pitch is two plus the number of teeth divided by the outside diameter. So this gear has 18 teeth. So 18 plus two equals 20. Then you divide that by the diameter. And in this case, it equals to 13.87. So you round that up. And so that diametrical or diametral pitch is 14. Now, um, the discussions online, everybody points to the diametral pitch being 16 on these, on these gears with a um, angle pressure of 14 and a half. Well, the angle pressure is 14 and a half but they are incorrect to saying that the diametral pitch is 16. It's actually 14. So in my case, I purchased a set of involute cutters that are 16 diametral pitch. Now, um, as you see, I've received them and uh, I'm actually going to use them to cut the stub gear replacement that I need in order to cut metric threads. Now you're probably gonna say, well, Gilles, that's not gonna match correctly. And you are correct. It's not gonna match perfectly, but it is going to mesh. And at least that's what I believe. And uh, my experiments with 3D printed gears sort of prove that in a way, except that, you know, it's not a perfect mesh, but it did work. So um, now what why would I proceed with these particular involute cutters? Well, number one, uh, I paid $250 for a set including the arbor, whereas one involute cutter at 14 diametral pitch is two hundred dollars plus shipping plus tax plus whatever, which would equal to the same amount of money. Now, if I were to produce all these uh, uh, 1.5 millimeter threads for someone else, clearly I would purchase the correct 
uh, Involute cutter. And I actually do have one on order that I found, but it's about 35 bucks from China versus 200 some dollars here in Canada. So I'm going to see if we can do this with these 16 diameter pitch Involute cutters. Sorry, sorry, this direction. So you put the gear cutting mechanisms in the correct spot. Line up the keys. There, and that's it. So, we need one more washer in here, and then put the nut on, and then I'll tighten it up later. Okay, so this is, so as it turns, it's going to cut the gear. All right, let me see if I can show you a different view, All right? Okay, so let's put this down for a second. Now these envelope cutters are uh, all very nice as well. Uh, they're uh, numbered. Let me show you. Let's see if I can get this correctly zoomed in for you. See? So, um, of course, I've got my glasses. All right, so you can see you've got the diametral pressure stamp. That's 16 right here. Uh, you've got, these are 14 and a half uh, angle pressure, so they're clearly marked. And then it shows you, it shows you the teeth that it's good for. So in this case, it'll cut uh, gears that require either 35 up to 54 teeth. So that's what you can actually get, do with that. So, with the, so you know, and of course, every one of these gears as a different range. Now, um, as regarding the price of this kit, it came to, including tax and, and whatnot, about $250 Canadian. So quite cheap in US dollars, of course. And I uh, purchased this through Amazon. Now I have uh, arbors that I've made myself, but, and I could have made one, but honestly, if I'm gonna buy these gears for a hundred and some dollars, I might as well pitch in and buy the actual arbor that is gonna fit them properly. So that's what I decided to do. So let's uh, put this aside and let's talk about um, uh, spur gears a little bit. When it comes to gears, there's quite a bit of theory that we need to understand and um, one of the books that I found to be useful is this one right here by Ivan Law. And it's really made for the home machinist. So it, it's great. You know, things are well explained. They explain the theory and, and uh, in a, in, but in a way that is understandable. Now, if, uh, if you're a hobbyist like myself and you really like machining, I would strongly suggest you get this uh, Engineer's Black Book. It's a fantastic resource. Let's have a quick look at this uh, Engineer's Black Book because it, it is quite interesting. And I'm going to show you a couple of features that I really love about this thing. It's got, uh, it shows you the different nomenclature, so the naming of the different parts of a spur gear and of the teeth. And uh, the cool part here is that it yeah. relates it to a picture, which is really, really nice. Uh, the pressure angle in my case is 14.5. So uh, if you know a couple of the numbers, you can actually figure out from these calculations what size wheel you need. I put in these numbers in there and bam, I ended up with a gear that requires a size of two and a quarter inches. That is cool. The other way you do it, say you had one of those gears, already and you probably do already because you're trying to match something in my case i'm trying to make a gear so that i could cut metric uh, threads so here you have uh gears okay and these are in um, imperial and these are actually printed in actual size so you can take your gear and put it on here and you'll see where you're at now that is really really nice to to have uh, it also has it in the metric. And uh, so anyway, tons of great information. Now this book is not cheap. It's a little reference book, but it's about 65 bucks Canadian. Very handy to have. I'm sure glad I um, uh, I invested in because now I'm in my second year of doing this hobby. 
and uh, I'm actually getting value out of this information. So that's the gist on how to, you're gonna select your gear. You know, here it tells you, okay, for how many gear, for how many teeth, say in my case, 34 teeth, I need a number five. So I selected the number five, Involute Cutter. So I'm gonna get, I know I'm going to get, you know, the appropriate spacing and ang pressure angles and all that stuff when I cut my gear. And I've also figured out that I need a two and a quarter inch diameter uh, piece of material. So now I can cut my material down to that diameter. And then, um, you know, once I, I've got it cut, I'll put it into my dividing head, put this uh, involute cutter in my mill, and I will cut the teeth until I reach the appropriate depth. And that's also in the book. So that's basically how it's done. Uh, that's how you go about it. Now, there is not <laughs> a great deal of uh, information on the gears that are available in order to cut metric threads. And when I uh, couldn't find what I had, I thought, okay, how about uh, matching, say, gears from a different size lathe? Well, so I went in the parts manual of the South Bend lathes, and I found that uh, my 1944 lathe, my 13, uh, uses the same uh, uh, stub gear as the South Bend 16. So I did a quick search on eBay for South Bend 16, and bam, I found uh, that some guy was selling a 34 tooth. So, uh, you know, so I can cut, say with a, let me see here, with a 34 tooth gear, I can cut 1.5 millimeter threads, which is great. And uh, in this, I have a single tumbler uh, quick change gear. So if I put it on 32 threads per inch, this is what I'm gonna get. And I actually checked it out and it works. So this is great information. So what I'm gonna do next, of course, is I'm going to cut a gear, you know, go through the whole process and I'll have to, you know, uh, pay attention because that'll be my first one. Uh, now, I tried making them on my 3D printers, but the material was too soft and it kept getting crushed uh, simply by the other gears that that uh, meshed with it. But it's kind of nice that uh, you can have one change of gear and you can get all of these different uh, metric threads that you can, uh, you can make. So, that's uh, the... Uh, the arbor for an R8, which is like a Bridgeport style uh, of mill. Involute cutter, talked a little bit about that, that there's different numbers and each one has a range of teeth that it can cut for, you know, specific diametral pitch and the, uh, uh, the pressure angle. So once you know this uh, for yourself, then uh, you're off to the races. Honestly, so this is a, this was a good purchase in my view. We'll find out a little bit more when I put it to work. And uh, I highly recommend you get these books. Honestly, it's very useful and it's uh, in plain English. So very easy read. And uh, this black book, again, is like they don't baffle you with BS. So it's all great. So thanks for watching. I hope this was useful. Please leave me your com comments, questions, etc. And uh, I'm always uh, happy to hear from you. Take good care. Bye-bye.